Hey guys, it's Corey. Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about triads today and how they're such an important part of music and guitar playing, but I'm really going to break them down to the smallest element on the guitar. We're going to play them on three strings. We're going to move them around. It's really going to help our soloing and even our rhythm playing. And another small great little device is this guitar right here, the Triple O C Junior 10E from Martin Guitars. And here's the kicker. I'm giving this thing away. So if you're watching this between now and May 15th, 2020, you can enter to win. I'll put the link in the description below. You'll get an email from me saying, hey, thanks for entering. And uh, you'll get a shot to win this little baby. Great travel guitar, killer big sound. And I thought, what better guitar to do a, a lesson on triads with than this one right here. So if you're digging the channel, I encourage you to subscribe. Please be sure to ring the bell so you're notified when I put out new videos. And if you wanna help the cause even further, check out the link for the merch. We got t-shirts, mugs, stickers, all that kind of stuff. And you can show everybody that you're supporting me and my teaching efforts here on this channel. Now don't forget, if you're watching this between now and May 15th, 2020, you can enter to win this guitar. The link is in the description below. All right, so let's talk a little bit about these triads that I'm playing. Now, I'm basically sticking to triads that are on the first three strings. And in the soloing that I did, you saw me kind of skipping and hopping around, but I use them as, as a sort of a landmark, really, in a way that I can always play notes that are the right notes when a particular chord change comes. Now, how do I know that? Well, you gotta know the chords that you're soloing over. That's rule number one. You have to know let's say the topic you're going to be discussing. You don't just go up to a podium in front of a bunch of people at work and start talking about something you don't know about. You study it, you research it, and then you improvise a little bit in addition to what you already know how to play. That might be your licks and that sort of thing. So when we improvise and we use these three string triads, we can use them as little landmarks. Now we're in the key of G here and what we played was a lot of G chords and then there was four bars of C, and then there was an E minor. I think it was two bars of that, then two bars of D, then back to C and G. Okay? So what I was doing is I was kind of walking into those triads and I was kind of playing around them, but you gotta know them first. So let's take a look at how we're actually gonna apply them and learn them on the guitar. So what is a triad? Well, first of all, a triad is a three note chord derived from notes in a major scale. So in the key of G, we have a major scale. Those notes right there, right? So what's important to know about that is that we're gonna have a G and then we count up three notes. One, two, three. The next note is a B. Three notes up from that. Or is a D, and we get these three notes. And that's a G triad, or a G major chord. Now what you can do is you can add or subtract as many of those as you want, and you're always going to have a G chord. You could have a G, and have a G way up there, and it'd still be a G chord. It's ridiculous, I know, but my point is, the three notes are the ingredient of the chord, and you can have as many or as little of those as possible. That occurs on the guitar all the time. If you play this, in that G bar chord, there's a lot of G's, B's, and D's happening. In this open chord, this one just has one B. Play this one, and you get two Bs. So it's, it's a combination of any of those three notes. Same thing is going to go for the C major chord and the D major chord. The E minor chord will also follow suit. And there's more on that later that you can learn as far as how chords are constructed. But we're going to play some shapes that are really going to complement those chords made with three notes on the top three strings of the guitar. So let's start with the G. And if we start here with the G note on the top string, uh, third fret, that's your G. Then we go right to a D, then we add a B. Now we can have these notes in any order that we want, but as long as we have those, we have a G chord. And that's the only time they'll occur in music like that. So if we play B, D, G, you might hear the term uh, inversion thrown around a bit, okay? So basically it's like you took the chords G, B, D, and then you went B, D, G, and then you could go D, G, B, and you could keep kind of starting them at different intervals of the chord and you'd have an inversion. So there's the first one. That's all you need to know. And that's a little G chord. And you can see that when you play a bar chord. Or if you played like an F type, type shape. 
Let's move the next one up here to the uh, seventh and eighth frets. And lo and behold, it looks like a D chord. Because a D chord shape is a perfect little triad shape. And it does what we said it was going to do. It's going to start now from the D note on the seventh fret, third string, to the G note on the second string, eighth fret, and then the B note there up top. So we inverted it. Then the third one could be right here. It actually is right here. No code about it. We're going to go G, B, and D. Now this one actually does start on the G note. And the reason I started here instead of having this one is this one's probably what you're going to play mostly um, when you're starting here in this position in the key of G. Now we have B, G, B, and D. And we can play it a number of different ways. I like to play it lots of times with the second, third, and uh, th sorry, second, third, and first fingers because they're strong. But you could play the pinky, three, four, one. And that's going to be on the 10th and 12th frets. So get used to those. And you can put those together and you can kind of start to hear it becomes like a piano player that goes You know that sort of thing? The same thing will go for C, but you have to locate the root note now. Now if you want to start with this shape, just move it all the way up to the 8th fret first string. And you could then go to this one. And that would be your next C inversion. Or we could start here with the C in the bass, which would be here on the 5th fret 3rd string. And that'd be C, E, G. Those are our notes for C. And again, I'll have these all tabbed out. You can drop me a message through my website and I'll get you the, the chord charts for this. Again, so C, C, and C. And I don't think about them as a slash chord or anything like that. I just think of them as little C chords all flip flopped around. Now a D chord, you could start it here if you want with what you already know. Then you'd go here. How did I know that was D so quickly? Well, I knew C and I knew D was a whole step from there. And if you're playing these kind of bar chords, you can find those notes in there too. So here's D again, D and D. Now we need an E minor. So the first place I go, again, I always like to think of what's the quickest way to get to from point A to point B. And let's say we have an open chord that's a D minor. Well, if I move that up a whole step and just play those top three strings, there's a bass note there for you for reference. My E is here on the second string. That's fifth fret. Then my fourth fret is the B note. That's an important note because it's in the E minor chord. And then the G notes there. So that's an E minor triad on the top three strings. Here's another one. And that's actually going to start on the uh, the E note that is the, that's in the bass. So it's going to be E, G, B, starting on the ninth fret, 987. Now check this out. If I remove this note and move it up a half step, there's E major, there's E minor. That's the difference between major and minor chords. It's that simple. Just one note changes. You've heard that in Beatles songs. <laughs> then another one, which is kind of hard to play, which is why I'm playing on this little guitar with the cutaway so I can get up there nice and easy. You can play this on a guitar that wasn't a cutaway too. And it's going to be a lot of fun on the electric guitar, but we're showcasing how cool this little triple O junior is. So uh, that's why I chose it. Now, if I bar the 12th fret, G, B, and E, I'm going to have a little triad there as well, minor triad. What you could also do is those three notes created as well because it's the 12th fret. Okay, so those are the shapes I was really kind of playing off of. Let's play against the track a little bit and I'll sort of walk into them and walk in and out of them really and we'll see how we could use them for soloing, maybe even some rhythm playing as well. Okay, so let's try some of these triads against the track I played early on in the video. 
I'll play some basic triads we'll walk in and out of them and then I'll show you some tricks about how you can weave in and out of them to make them a little bit more you know solo-esque and you can even use them to, to come up with cool rhythm parts as well. Okay so I'll roll the track a little bit and I'll just play basic at first. Here it goes. So here's your G chord. Two, three, four. The other one, and then our third. Here comes a C chord. Try this one. Here comes the E minor chord. Play some approach notes. There's the C. E minor. Where does that leave us? We want to be able to play some of those cool lines. We want to take a look at the triad once we've learned it and figure some ways out to kind of make it sound a little bit more emotional, a little less like you're just putting the, the what I call paint by numbers, you know? So if you have this one, the G, the first one for G, the first one for us when it comes to G, slide into it. That's the first thing I did. Also, if we know your G major scale, try to find some notes that lead into it. There's a note that's in your chord. You can slide into that one, that's in the triad. You can leave the triad, like that note's not in the triad, but find a place to land. And that's important when you're playing any kind of ideas that are solo-esque, you're soloing, you're creating little melodies, you gotta find your landing spot. So you can go and really find that root note. Maybe you're playing something like this. And I find the two notes there that are my triad. So I'm visually seeing the shape like a like a, a transparency that goes over top of the guitar neck. I might go. Put a little period on the end of that sentence. So that's the vehicle, that's how I'm using them. That's the vehicle I'm using. When it goes to C, same idea. G, C, D, and E minor are all chords in the key of G. So you really can't go wrong leading into them. To the D. E minor. That's the way I would get started with these. Now, what you can do is you can find them on strings two, three, and four, three, four, and four, five, four, five, and six, and you can create little chords. You know, we could be playing.
fun little ideas like that with our chords. You know, maybe somebody's going. And you can go. Play a little E minor shape against that. So, you know, don't feel boxed in by any one thing you think you're supposed to do with any of this stuff. Um, you know, there's no visual or, or, or paint artist or painter or anything like that that said, I have to use blue here all the time. You can use these any way you want, however you want to, whether it's just in soloing or rhythm playing or both, doesn't matter. All right, well, I hope you walked away with a better understanding of how you can use triads in your lead and rhythm playing and use them as target notes when you're soloing so you're not really hunting and pecking for the right note or the money note. As long as you line the right triad up with the right chord, you can't go wrong. Again, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you here every week for new lessons, and please check out my website where I have loads of other guitar courses available. All right, so that's enough for today. I'm Corey Congilio. I'll see you on another lesson.